welcome to the Fired Up the CJ show. Today we have Christy Whitman and we are talking about her book, The Desire Factor. She's a New York Times bestselling author and she has helped certified over 3,000 coaches with her Law of Attraction Coaching Certification Program. And today we're going to step you through kind of at a very high level some of the key concepts in her book and um, show you through an actual coaching session on a real problem that I have. So welcome, Christy. Thank you so much for having me, CJ. So tell me, before you start, tell me a little bit about the seven principles and how you came up with them. So um, it is actually not me that came up with them. It is the council that I channel. So I am in consciousness with a collection of ascended masters. It sounds crazy, but it's true. And they literally give me blocks of thought and blocks of information that I wrote. And um, the collection then became a series of these are the seven steps to literally manifesting any desire that you have. And so um, they're very, they have to be in the exact same order. A lot of people have pieces of the manifestation puzzle, but they don't have them in the right place. And so it's like a padlock, right? Mm. If you have the the numbers out of place, it doesn't open, Mm. but if you get them in the right order, then it opens. And Mm. so that's what the council really wanted us to, to learn is that, and, and my own personal journey of 25 years of working with these principles, but putting them in a proper order and understanding them in a different way from an energy mastery perspective, mastering my own energy, which is my thoughts and my emotions and my perspectives, you know, all of that, then things flow. It, it, there, there's such a, a richness to life that has happened for me and my clients that work with myself in the council um, it's, it's far beyond just manifesting stuff for things or people. Um, there's so much more depth and meaning and, and passion and purpose with it. So I'm very grateful that I was able to bring forth this body of work from them. Excellent. Okay. So, um, this is actually perfect timing because I had just spoken to my husband about, um, I've been doing this radio show, gosh, probably almost for 10 years now. Wow. And it's time to rethink the radio show because I've grown and the radio show hasn't necessarily reflected and it's not in alignment with um, where I want to be going and where, uh, you know, it's basically been um, a show about um, learning and growing and helping other people along the path of the learning and growth towards I would say a lot of self-healing and self-development. So that's where I am right now. And I was wondering if you can actually set me through the principles um, in your book to help something. So we'll actually use a real life coaching session. I love I'll it. be your client. And I actually have done a fair amount of thinking about it. So I can actually, I'm going to rattle off a whole bunch of things. I love it. Because after like, an hour and a half of talking to my husband and thinking about it over the last month. So don't expect these same results at home, but it will give listeners a sense of how you would use the material. So I love that. Yeah. So, so yes, um, the very first principle is the principle of alignment. And so whenever it's, it's perfect, because maybe something that's worked for a long time, it could be a marriage, it could be a friendship, it could be a partnership, it could be a form of which, you know, you, you get to broadcast your message, whether it's a radio a podcast or whatever it may be, things shift and change. And sometimes the things that we once liked or enjoyed, it, the relationship dissolved, or there was a loss or, you know, some kind of contrast, it no longer is something that we appreciate or enjoy, or we feel we've grown from it, or maybe something just happened, but there's some contrast in your life. So the the opportunity is knowing that the contrast is, this doesn't feel like it used to, I feel like I need to grow beyond this, right? And then there's the, but I don't know what the beyond this is yet, right? It's like, there isn't that clarity. So the best thing to do is get in alignment with how you want to feel and how you want to experience. So if you're in the place of understanding that you f- you're feeling a sense of lack and that's really what contrast is is we're noticing some type of lack, mm-hmm. something that's not right or how we don't want to feel or something like that. Lack always feels bad. There's always some kind of resistance there. So if you were going to say what is it that you are lacking that you desire instead? Mm-hmm. But that's the, like, how do you want to feel? 
if you were going to go to a different platform, Mm -hmm. right. Or different for your, your listeners, viewers, you know, a different job, a different partner, a different, you know, yeah, so your, your question is, how do I want to feel is the main question. Okay. So um, I guess uh, here's what I would want to feel. I would want to feel um, a sense of excitement and um, excitement about learning new things. Um, because I, I feel like I, I, I have mined in 10 years, you can mine a, a fair amount about um self-growth and so i feel like i've i've seen and heard everything and not everything but enough i, I it's enough for me like i don't need to I, know another 10 I, years I, I i understand yeah so i want to feel excitement i want to feel um a sense of um mm, mm, feel a sense of being in alignment with my mission which I don't feel right now. I don't feel like there's an alignment with my mission per se, which has grown over the last 10 years. So aligning with your purpose. Yeah. Aligning with my purpose, which I'm, I'm pretty clear about, but it doesn't feel like it's alignment of that. So there's this kind of a uh, feel excitement and energy. That's, I guess it's a short answer. Feel excitement and energy. Is that okay. enough of an answer? Yeah, that's perfect. It's perfect. So, so really what the desire is, is to have that excitement in what you do, right? For someone else, it might be passion. It might feel purpose. For me years ago, it was I wanted to feel on purpose and I wanted to feel passionate about what I did. Didn't know what the form looked like, but always everything is created first with energy and the presence and the experience of energy, not the lack of it. Mm -hmm. And so being in awareness that you're in, in some kind of contrast, you're in some kind of dissatisfaction. Most people stay there, complain about the dissatisfaction instead of pivoting going, well, this contrast is making me aware that really what I do want is I want to feel excitement. I want to feel Mm -hmm. passion. I want to feel purpose, whatever that may be. Right. Well, that's where the desire factor comes in, right? Now that you know what you desire and, and that's where, you know, we help you get clear there too. How do you align with that desire? Mm -hmm. So the alignment comes into what is, what does your mind, because you got to get all parts of you into the manifestation process, right? That part of you, that is your focus, right? The mind always needs to be focused on something. If it's not focused on what you want, or you don't have the pictures in, it's going to focus on what you don't want or what it's already experienced or what it knows to be true about reality or life. And many times it's limited, Mm -hmm. right? So we need to be feeding that computer, that mind with every time we pivot and every time we realize that we desire something different and Mm -hmm. now I'm wanting to create excitement and maybe I haven't had that level of excitement before, or maybe I have, but it was short for a period of time. It's like, notice what your relationship is with the energy of excitement right? Mm -hmm. It could be the energy of being in well-being for somebody. They could feel like, hey, I've always got that. Or some people could feel like I've never felt that. Mm. Or it could be the the feeling of abundance, right? Well, I've never really felt abundant. I've always been in lack. Right. Right. Yeah. So I think it's a feeling of passion and being on mission would be the, I guess that's the principle of alignment. Is that, would, was that the first principle? Yeah. So you're getting clear what's Mm -hmm. alignment. Right. And then alignment really is about understanding that your consciousness creates your reality Mm -hmm. and that your consciousness, and this is where we break down all the principles now. So, because, because your mind is your consciousness, right? What you think, what you perceive. Mm -hmm. And so as you're focusing on now what you desire, so career, having more excitement, more passion, what is, what is the pictures like if you were going to do a slideshow, what are the pictures that you can then put in your mind, seeing yourself feeling that excitement? Are you on a big stage? Are you doing a podcast? Are you on a TV show? Are you still doing radio, but doing it in a different capacity? I mean, there's so many infinite options for the forms that you could have that excitement in your career doing what you love. Yeah, I think the in terms of what I came up with this afternoon when I was thinking about it, it's really um, 
a couple of different things. I think that my own spiritual, so it's about spirituality still, and it's about um, mirroring the journey that I'm on, which I think is some people are on as well as moving from an individual spirituality to a collective spirituality and a movement to higher consciousness, not just for myself, but societally. So it would be, that would be, one area I think would be a societal and um, collective focus versus an individual focus. So whereas before I was focusing on individual growth, um, the individual growth is set within a collective growth. And so if, if one moves individually, how do you actually then move, let's say the company that you're working with or the family that you're part of, or, the community that you're part of. So how do you actually take your individual growth and propel action and movement elsewhere? And I guess my vision is to continue doing radio because I actually really enjoy doing radio interviews. And um, so doing some spiritual stuff, I think also doing, um, um, I think here's the vision I have so far. One is moving us to um, almost taking the collective, uh, I think, collective movement that we're going through right now, which is a lot with COVID and otherwise. And I think that there is a collective spiritual evolution that is happening collectively. And so talking to some of the biggest, you know, big names in spirituality and interview them, like, here's what's happening with society what's the spiritual lens that you can take on it. So that would be one aspect of it. The other is working with people who are doing cultural change at an organizational level and getting a sense of what that entails. In addition to like, I have a whole bunch of individual healing that I've, you know, there's so much content I already have on individual healing, but it's actually adding to um, how does a corporation, how does an organization heal? How does a society heal and part of that is having a conscious understanding of what's happening as well as tools to do that like even if it's an individual tool that you need within a framework of a collective if that makes sense it makes perfect sense yeah so that's my focus is that clear enough for a focus that's clear enough for a focus so because because it's you right if if you feel clear with that focus that's what it, it then leads into that image of Cause you don't, cause here's the thing. And part of the, one of the processes or one of the principles is surrender because a lot of times we get so my, you know, micro-focused on something. It's gotta be that form. It's gotta be that job. It's gotta be that person. It's gotta be this thing. And to understand that, it, that it's this or something better, right? So you have images and pictures in your, in your mind. The whole part of this process is that all of your consciousness, what you say what you think, what you perceive, what you feel, every action you take, that focus is focused on the having of it, not on the absence of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I think I'm not sure exactly what form this will take, but I think it's almost okay though. Yeah. It's, I think it's like for, as I'm talking about it, it's for people who are individual warriors let's say that they actually want to um to lead society and the organizations are with to something greater how do you go about doing that you have to do the work yourself but then how do you actually go and create societal and collective change that's that's basically a, a better way of saying it i think awesome So that's the focus, right? And then you move on to the next principle. And that's the principle where a lot of um, belief work will come up. A lot of anytime there's any split energy within a human being because they go, okay, I want this. I'm focusing in there. The next principle is the principle of joyful expectancy, Mm -hmm. right? So there's, there's usually a time when someone, it's always happening, when someone says, I'm here, I want to get here. Right. And there's that gap between whether it's a mental gap, an emotional gap, it's always an energetic gap because it's always a vibrational gap. If you start vibrating at that level Mm -hmm. that that thing is vibrating at, you're in the having of it, which is the next principle. Right. Mm -hmm. So they all flow together. But 
a lot of times people say, I want this, I start fo- they start focusing on it, and then they feel resistance pulling them back saying, well, who are you to do that? Oh, people are already doing that. Oh, there's nobody able, nobody knows how to do that, right? The, the limitations that the mind has gathered along the way will create a bigger gap than clo- instead of closing it. So in that joyful expectancy place, right, you have to listen to what the, either the mind or the emotions, whatever the, you're feeling like you're not going in this direction. You feel like you're not feeling good about it, or you're feeling limited in some way. And, and how do you know that? Cause you feel, you feel negative emotion. You feel lower level emotion because when you're in alignment, you feel good. Mm-hmm. So I think the, um, the concerns that I have would be, um, perhaps dropping off the audience that I have, which, you know, I've built up over, you know, cause it's going to be a slightly different lens than the lens that I've had. However, I also believe that people are on the same spiritual journey as I am. So they're probably ready for this content. Um, if they've been following me throughout, they've, they're ready for this new content because they're also going through and evolving. Um, so it's like um, diminishing my audience would be one. And I think the other thing is, you know, I have to, it's about, Mm, attracting a new set of people or finding a new way of doing um, client, like finding radio interviews. Right now I have a lot of bunch of PR people contact me on books, like flowing in, in in a plethora of books landing (laughs) on my door every single day. (laughs) So I have all the, I have the mechanisms in, in place to make this super easy. And so, yeah, it's kind of building from scratch, like, a new set of authors and a new set of things to be doing. So I think it's just, I don't know if it's limitations, but it's like, Oh, I, I'm already, I'm launching lots of other things right now. And, and um, the paid part of my career, this is the unpaid part that I do as a volunteer and charitable contribution to authors. Cause I really want to um, get the word out there for good work. Um, like we're doing today. Um, so it's like, Oh gosh, this is just a big work. <laughs> have to think through i'm like i'm gonna have to do the website and you know. well so so here's yeah see here's the thing that's the, that's then the mind can go oh it's gonna take a lot of work and right you can tell yeah. you all they are you in joyful expectancy right now no i mean i'm not in joyful expectancy for sure yeah so the key is to then focus back on the excitement right <laughs> that they don't the involvement that you and those listeners because I'm sure if you're feeling it on some level, they're feeling it on some level. And many of them are probably really excited that, Ooh, I like this new direction Mm -hmm. and they're going to follow. You're not starting out fresh and new as if you Mm -hmm. never have done this before. Right. Yeah. You know, three years ago, I literally was told by the council and they just literally came through me that we're pivoting everything. I, I still certify law of attraction coaches, but my whole entire business for since 2008, was certifying coaches. I did, you know, personal development work and and obviously healing and work and coaching and all that stuff always. But that was the main part of my business. And they said, okay, we're changing. We're shifting. Mm. We're now, everything is going to be channeled. Christy and the council, meditations, everything. And that was a big, like, holy, like, <laughs> of faith, right? It's like, right. okay, joyfully expecting. And it's been amazing how it's just because I'm following, I'm following it just in that space of flexibility and flow and following where the energy goes. And it's been absolutely amazing. It, it's been a, a, a really seamless transition because I mm. wasn't starting off, right? I already had hundreds of thousands of people listening to me and following me and getting my emails and on social media, right? They, some of them went, okay, that's weird. Bye-bye. Right. right. And it's like, <laughs> blessings to you, you know, and others were like, Oh my God, been waiting for this. Interesting. So, so being in that joyful expectancy of I'm, I'm just expecting that more of the people that are resonate with the information that the council is here to give and provide and help heal that they will find, they will find us. They will hear us that, you know, I joyfully expect 
the constant flow of clients that are eager and willing to listen and are willing to put in the work. Right. So it's that place of just being in joyful expectancy, because if my mind and it's true could go to, Ooh, I lost so many people. Mm -hmm. They they think I'm weird because I'm channeling. Right. Right. Maybe, maybe I should stay where I was. Maybe I Mm -hmm. should, you know what I mean? That's, that's, I'm in a totally different vibration than joyful expectancy, right? Mm -hmm. Because after joyful expectancy, it's like, you're expecting, like the universe is totally providing. If I'm Mm -hmm. being guided this way, if I'm being Mm -hmm. inspired, if the energy is flowing in this way, I'm going to do everything I can in my consciousness to focus on the fulfillment of it, to joyfully expect through the gap that I'm raising, doing what I need to do to raise my consciousness or my vibration or however you want to say that. And then to get into what the fourth principle is, and that's the feeling of having. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to make sure that as often as you can, not when it happens, but right here, right now, because the energy is always in the present now moment, that energy of excitement is literally like bubbling up into coursing through your veins. You're feeling it now because when you're in the principle of having it, there's no more gap by vibrationally. You literally rise up to that vibration. Even if you're kind of making it up, well, I've never felt passion before, but I think if I cultivated passion in myself, this is what it might feel like. And then you start connecting with it more and start growing with it. And then all of a sudden start things that actually match that vibration, small little things. You get passionate about something. Ooh, I felt that passion, Mm -hmm. right? I felt the excitement or I felt Mm -hmm. the purpose. Mm -hmm. And, And that's how you just start to grow this energetic connection and relationship Mm -hmm. with whatever it is that you feel that we all desire things, right? right? And whatever we desire, there's a reason that we want it. And it's a feeling sense. It's an energetic connection because everything in this universe is first created with energy and then it's formed. Mm -hmm. And so the, the more we can understand that we are energy receivers that we are energy containers, because a lot of people might, oh, I'll just just allow in a little bit of love or just a little bit of abundance, like that energy, right? So they just take it and then it goes out. When you understand that it's like, it's unlimited, you can, you could have, you could be drowning in the energy of love or abundance or whatever it is. It's all up to us, free will and all, right? Nothing can be imposed on us. It's not an assertion based universe. We allow in literally in receiving mode because we're always taking in energy but it's how much we allow in Mm -hmm. so we are energy receivers we're energy containers do we allow ourselves to have that containment that reservoir of love and abundance and joy Mm -hmm. right if we're feeling lack or feeling depleted at all we're not in that higher space of containment we're, we're bringing little in and then sending more of it out. So we feel exhausted, overwhelmed. We're not being replenished. Yeah, I got and, it. And so I, I do think that that um, it's funny because right, right before um, we met, I was actually doing my own channeling. And um, the interesting thing that I got out of it was the work pace. I, I've just signed up a bunch of clients. And so there's, and it's this kind of breakneck pace and, I'm, and luckily it's winding down over the next month and a half. And I realize that I need more time to have light and to channel and to tune in because I'm with this breakneck pace that I've just been going through. It's just not allowing any space and not allowing. And it's funny because it was dark here and now the light is just shining all over my face. <laughs> I love it. But I assume that this is like universe talking to me. I love it. But I do think it's like what I got from what I was channeling was about letting, letting your light shine through. And so it's like, and I think I have that. I've, I've been caught in the, um, in doing a, a set of work that I feel like I've grown past. And then also, um, um, working in a style and manner in which doesn't support enough space in my life. So that, I mean, it's in, in order for the infinite to infinite love, infinite 
beauty, infinite, whatever, like it's there, but you need to make in some ways is, is open up to it so that you can receive feel it. that it's there and receive it. And so I haven't spent enough time receiving it, you know, aside from the show where the light is beaming down and I'm almost blinded from the light. <laughs> Okay. Um, or so, yeah. So that is so that's loving the next one. Well, yeah. So so once and here's the fun part. Once you're in the place of having, like you're you feeling the excitement, right? You've got that as a vibration. Then, like you take it up a notch, and this is what a lot of people miss in the like manifestation world. It's like love is the highest vibration. It is the manifestation ray. So when you are feeling the excitement, for example, and then you love feeling the excitement, right? You're loving the experience of manifesting it. You are in such gratitude and love. You already, when you're in love and gratitude for what is in the process of becoming, it comes to you so much quicker yeah. because you, you are just in such the flow, but most people don't do that. They feel the having of it and then they recognize the absence of it. And then they have to get themselves right back in alignment, starting with, you know, number one, right? They they don't take the time to, to just love on, it could be anything. You want to create a trip to, I don't know, Austria, you know, it's, it's like, as you're creating it, feel the having of it and love the trip before you even go on it. Yeah. Love on <laughs> Love on your show, love on your clients before you even start the pivot. Yeah. You know, it's um, one of the things that I'm personally going through is, and I'm not even sure, the more you actually merge with the collective, the more your pain that you're feeling is less your individual self and it's more the collective pain. And so I'm going through things that are just, I don't even understand, honestly, like I'm in meditation and screaming. And I'm like, I don't even know. I'm like, I'm pretty actually, I'm pretty good. But there's like some part of me that I think there's, is the collective screaming? Absolutely. And so I'm just going through all of this. And um, as I was sitting in my journey, as I was sitting in my meditation, and then afterwards I was channeling on it, it was um, what I was getting was, you know, you're now going through, you know, once you move through your individual pain, you're asked to take on more. So you're asked on to take the pain of the collective and to also just like you go through your own pain and move through it. And you need, it's about doing that same thing for the collective. And, and, um, in when I was channeling, I was saying, and the most important thing is to hold yourself in, in unconditional love because, it's strange. Like what I'm doing is like so incredibly strange because I'm sitting there in meditation, yelling and screaming, crying. I don't even, it, there's nothing in my personal content. It's now moving to some collective content that I frankly don't even understand, but I know, I know, and I feel that it's there. And so I don't know if other people, and I've talked to other people who are on this journey and they're going through the same thing. So, you know, gra even gra explaining. gratefully, I am, I, I am not actually, yeah. because, because I understand, I understand that, yes, of course, collectively as a human 3D race, there is a lot going on and it is a birthing time. It is a, uh, you know, it, it's been amplification time, but in higher consciousness, it's a, there's peace and there's love and there's expansion and there's no chaos that chaos and drama and pain and suffering and victimization all of that is a very much a human being 3d thing because the divine the multi-dimensionality of us never goes there and so that's why it, it's so painful and it sucks so much because we're not being supported in that moment because it can't go where we have gone it's not going to go and lower itself into suffering and pain and drama and chaos and all of that. It stays centered in light. And so it's our consciousness that has to align with that light or be resistant of it. But the thing is, though, is that as you bring in more light to the planet, to the individual, to the collective, as you bring in more light, the darkness gets illuminated so that the light can transmute it. Yeah. And I'm, and, Everyone has their own individual journey. My journey, for whatever reason, 
I guess I chose it. Some people believe, I don't know, but if some people believe that you come down as a soul, you choose your, I don't know if that's true or not. Totally. Uh, is. What, that's what the council says anyway. Yeah. yeah. But for whatever reason, this must've been the journey that I chose to basically use my, my current embodiment as a human to channel through and transmute alchemically human consciousness. I've done my own consciousness. Now it's human consciousness so that generally collective consciousness can have more light, so to speak. So lots I, of, lots of gratitude for, you know, the, the collective work that you're willing to do. And I appreciate being a sister in light and doing, you know, light work. And I'm grateful I don't have to do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> they can counsel. Yeah, exactly. Be, you just have to be the spreader of information. I have to be this holding the space for, for something new to be rebirthed. Right. And I don't, and, you know, in some ways, the embodiment of our human consciousness and letting in alchemically changing. Why? I don't know. And I guess I moves to the last part, which is the principle of surrender. <laughs> right. Exactly. So yeah, there's, there's two that are left and um, the principle of surrender is one of those that, okay, you're in the good feeling place, you're connected to love. And then it's like, okay, what, as a human being, what am I going to do? Right. It's like any place where the mind wants to go, the who, the where, the what, the when, the how, how long is it going to, any of that kind of stuff, that's what we have to surrender over. Because if we're truly coming from the place, and that's really what the desire factor is all about, is understanding that there's not just me here, it's me. And there, you know, there's collective consciousness, there's individual consciousness that is flowing through me, that's creating differently through me than it is for you or anybody else. It's it's an array of the ray of the sun and and mm -hmm. it's like a tentacle that gets to create and move energy and, and you know and express itself and so i have to then understand that there are um it, it's like da it's like dancing with the divine right there's mm -hmm. dance moves when when does the divine lead and when do i lead or when do i you know if i ever lead right it's it's a dance <laughs> yes i think i lead but you know, I was like, you said surrender. And I'm like, but I want to go this way. And they're like, no, you need to go. No, but I want to go this way. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes I resist that. We all do. You know, it's like, no, I want to do that. I want to have to be that form. It's got to be that person. It's, you know, but it's surrendering that it's like, whatever, whatever you're asking of me, I surrender the timing. I surrender this worry thought. I surrender this lack perspective. This is where I give that over to the divine because that is where the energy will have the power to transmute the lower into the higher. And, and, I, think I, the, and I think the thing to just add as a caveat for that, even when you ask the, if you sur surrender to a divine, it's not like divine all, all of a sudden will redo my website. You know, I mean, it will give you the energy, the energy and clarity, the energy and yeah. clarity to do that. Because it's yes. like, will someone show up at my website, on my door saying, hey, I'm going to do your whole website. <laughs> no, that maybe actually, not. <laughs> that actually could happen in many yeah. ways. Like you could get someone that just says, hey, I happen to check your website out. Would you like to update it? I mean, yeah. I've had that, so many things like that happen. Literally thinking of a person, she walked in as I was getting my nails done and we we're having a conversation. So, I mean, just stuff like that happens all the time. Okay. So I will, I will open up to the joy of expensive that the same thing will happen to That's me. It, that it could just flow in. Right. But, the, but the last principle after we do the surrender and we are literally now like an open vessel, we've given all the resistance away, right? Then it's, that's when the divine gives us the inspiration. We're open to it. We're, we're free to hear it, to be expanded by it. And that's when we get our marching orders, if you will, right? It's like, go do this, call that person, go to that bookstore, buy this book, listen to this podcast, listen to the radio show, you know, call that person, you know, hey, go pivot your business in a totally right. different direction than right. you've ever known, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, like the, you would get these like inspired actions and then it's up to us to take them. And one of the things that I love that the council talks about on action is that we are action takers I and mean, we are the physical to the non-physical and the non-physical cannot take action unless we are the ones taking it. Even 
if it's an interaction, mm. we could be sitting here, not even moving our bodies. And I could think of a thought of lack. And then maybe it's a thought that comes in my head that says life is really hard. And in that moment, just even having a conversation, life's not hard. Life is fun. Life is easy. I'm pivoting. That's an action. Mm-hmm. It's an interaction, mm. right? So it's getting up and running a mile or hiking the Grand Canyon or speaking in front of millions of people. It's what are the interactions that we do? Are our thoughts aligned with what we want? Mm -hmm. And it goes, it's like a spiral, right? It's like, it's these seven steps that literally create energetic spirals. And the, the more momentum and the more consistency that you have in the direction vibrating at the place that you want to be, that's what the outer reality is. Because mm. anything that's impressed in us is expressed in the outer world. Mm. Mm. Okay, so, uh, so we've talked about your seven principles. You've talked about, and I think this really came through, I was actually um, meeting with my spiritual teacher and I said, what do I need to work on? And I was like, oh, I need to actually rethink this whole thing. And it just came out of thinking about my spiritual journey. I was like, this is, there's something out of alignment. And so that's the inspiration that came. And now I, I, as to use your terminology, I'm now spiraling to the next, you know, it's like, you know, then I talked about it today, then, and then miraculously, when I decide to talk about it today, I have an interview with you an hour later, like <laughs> the universe. <laughs> I was like, wow, isn't that weird? I was just talking about this and like, look, someone is actually coming on my radio show that I can actually move to the next level. So I want to talk to you about your, your journey. So you actually did a pretty big pivot. You've, you're following, I assume the guidance of your, of your counsel. I mean, what have you found? How, how has your work um, expanded, unfolded and, and, and your journey so far? Well, for me, it's, I've always learned, you know, when I first learned meditation 25 years ago, I learned from channel beings. I, I learned mm -hmm. from um, a woman who was a meditation teacher that channeled. Mm -hmm. And then she introduced me to other people that channeled. And it, that was just, you know, I opened up in a big way. It wasn't like, you know, not, I love Tony Robbins, but it wasn't like a Tony Robbins. It was very much a, a, ch a huge channel of first person channeling. Yeah. And so that for me, wasn't weird. And all, all mm -hmm. along the way, whether it was Orin and Daben or, you know, Abraham Hicks or even Theo. And at times, you know, there was always a, a spiritual um, connection that I had with a channeler and so for me to be able to, to do that now in, in a, in first person, it's almost like what it, what I'm a human and I have 25 years of practicing and working consciously on my spiritual path with these universal laws. Because for me, my basic teaching has always been, how do we get out of lack and into abundance mm -hmm. and how do we shift our consciousness? Because that's where my leading edge was 25 years ago. And that's where mm -hmm. most people still get stuck. Mm -hmm. And, and so it was understanding all the universal laws and understanding the law of sufficiency and abundance. And so, you know, then training other coaches to do that right now, it's literally the only thing I coach or teach with the council, with all of the things that we do, we do meditations, we do healing events, we teach a course together called quantum energy mastery. I mean, you know, we do individual clients, there, there's sacred circle of light where we have 10 people come together, and they're just getting healings each and every week. I mean, it's extraordinary work. And the, 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 the shifts that people have is just, I'm so grateful that I could just literally use my container for this deeper healing to come through. Um, there's only one thing that I do with the council where I'm now still teaching and sharing my stories. And that's in quantum energy mastery, because they want me to share like from a practical level, what happened to me this week as a human being practice, you know, practicing these principles but still very much grounded in 3D reality. I'm a wife. I'm a mom of two young boys. I've got a dog. I've got friend, <laughs> girlfriends. You know, I go right. hiking. I mean, I do Pilates. You know, I'm, I'm very much 
<laughs> I don't live in a cave somewhere, right? right? Like I'm ground. I, I've got the, the person that can cut me off and flip me off and the person that can be rude at a Starbucks or you know right. whatever it is. And how do I then take what they're teaching and master that from an energy mm-hmm. perspective, understanding mm-hmm. that we still have emotions and we still have thoughts and we still have imprints and, you know, everything that we're, how do you stay grounded as a 3d person, but connected to your multidimensionality? Yeah. And so that's the only class that I ever teach now with, with them, they do Q and a, but everything else is like, hi, bye. They come through and I mean, people have healed from lifetimes of migraines to, wow. we had a, a guy that was diagnosed with cancer completely within a, a four, four month time frame went from wow. literally to now thriving. Uh, I mean, women have lost without even going on diet, lost uh, upwards of 40 pounds because they were holding so much energy from old past resentments mm. and hurts and frustrations. And we know that everything is energy. And, um, they're, they're amazing. They holographically can look at a person and this is what still freaks, it it still surprises me every time this happens. Like a client will say, Oh my God, I have never told another soul in my life what happened when I was four years old. And I didn't even say it to them. They literally went, okay, when you were four years old, this is when an imprint happened. Let's shift this imprint. Let's shift its decision. Let's release it. And they didn't even tell them, right? That they got they, that's when their family moved, or that's when their parents got a divorce, or that's when they were abused in some many different ways. And and yet they go right to the per, right to the place where the energy got blocked and hmm. open them up. So it's it's wow. extraordinary. I'm so grateful. So people want to. I know that the for this book that you're going to be launching in April of this year um, is next year, right? Is it April? No, it's already. Yeah, it's already. It already okay, launched. got it. It already. Okay, launched. okay. It's yeah. thedesirefactor.com. If people want to be part of your healing circles, how do they? How do they participate? It sounds incredible. This quantum healing. How do they participate? So you can go. Um, and you can learn all about it. Um, it's all there. Uh, something I always recommend. Uh, the, the, it actually got caught off when you said that. Can you say it again? Oh, um, sure. ChristyWhitman.com. Okay, got it. Christy so Whitman. Any way, you spe- any way you spell Christy or any way you spell Whitman, you'll get there. So okay. ChristyWhitman.com. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, so, something that's great because um, in order to p- apply this information, like how do we bring esoteric, you know, spiritual information and energy work and all that stuff into practical terms? One of the ways that we focus and one of the ways that we line is by what we say. There's mm-hmm. so many people that say words and phrases that they don't even realize how it pulls down their energy into lack. Mm-hmm. And so for years, I would get asked on interviews, like, how do you apply this information? Like, what's one practical thing that you can mm-hmm. do? And I'd always say, you have to watch your words. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to create, and it's a free gift. It's a free program, but it's called watch your words. You could go to watchyourwords.com mm-hmm. and it's a, it's a free 30 day video program. Every day you get a video. It's about two to four minutes in length. It tells you what not to say, why, and what to say instead. Because Wonderful. every, yeah, every time we're saying I miss something or I can't wait, or, you know, Oh, I should, these type of words yank at our, pull our energy down. And our words are the first start of any creation. Even said the Bible in the beginning, there was the word. Right. And so words are the start of every single creation process. And so we want everything to be in alignment from your consciousness. I love it. Okay. So you can go watch your words.com in order to get these videos. You can yeah. go to christywhitman.com to join some of the healing C-H-R-I-S-T-Y Whitman, but any way you spell it should get to you. Yeah. And you can go to the desirefactor.com to learn more about the book. Wonderful. Thank you so much.